Okay, great. So without any further ado, our first presentation is on Beyond Graph and Neural Networks. We lifted the relation on Neural Network and Gustav, the floor is yours. So, so please go great. ahead. Thank you very much. Can you see my share? We can right? actually see your, yeah, we can see your okay. share screen, no problem. Perfect, thank you very much. Okay, so it's great to virtually meet you all. My name is Gustav, and I will show how you can get beyond graph neural networks with this lifted relational neural networks framework that we introduced in 2015. I've been kind of working on it ever since. We also like to call it Neurologic for short. And the idea of the talk is to basically show you that uh, it is kind of more powerful than graph neural networks and that you might want to consider using it, especially if you've been thinking about pushing the boundaries of graph neural nets in terms of expressiveness or combining them with logic in one way or another. Now, the structure of the talk is super simple. After some generic introduction, I will introduce the core framework itself. And then I will show you how we can use it to encode various neural architectures all the way up to the graph neural nets and then extrapolate beyond in terms of performance and expressiveness. So now the deep learning IDI basically needs no introduction, right? It's this concept of using gradient descent to optimize parameters of nested functions, the computational graphs of which can be quite conveniently represented uh, by these layered uh, models popularly referred to as neural networks. And the underlying idea here is learning of latent representations commonly viewed through the hidden layers in these models. And now the main limitation that we address in this work is the form of this representation, which is um, typically constrained to the fixed size numeric tensors. Now on the other side of the machine learning spectrum, we have this, our uh, relational learning or inductive logic programming community, which uses the language of relational or first order logic to capture richly structured data in the various forms of annotated graphs, hypergraphs, and so on, as well as the patterns and models induced from these data. And the inference with these models can then also be uh, depicted by computational graphs, commonly referred to as proof trees or resolution trees. And now the research question, uh, obviously, is how to integrate all these things together in order to make neural networks learn with rich relational representations or from the other spec perspective, how to use gradient descent for inductive logic programming. And now to put this into some context, we've been kind of inspired by these so-called lifted graphical models, which use the expressive language of logic extended with these numeric parameters to serve as templates for unfolding so-called ground or standard graphical models, such as in this super popular uh, example of uh, Markov logic network template about smokers being unfolded into this uh, standard ground Markov network. Now, the interesting thing to note about the uh, ground network here is the use of shared weights as induced uh, by the use uh, of the classes in the template and the symmetries in the model. And then we kind of take this lifting uh, idea and bring it into uh, the deep learning to make neural networks learn with these relational representations. So with that, we introduced in 2015, actually, uh, this lifted relational neural networks framework, where syntactically, this is somewhat similar to the Markov logic networks. The templates also take the form of uh, weighted uh, sets of weighted uh, definite clauses in this case. So these are commonly represented in the form of rules in the context of logic programming, which we follow also quite closely. And then again, uh, similar to the spirit of ILP, the learning examples themselves are also represented in weighted logic, uh, typically sets of weighted facts as shown in here. And then instead of inputting an example into model as common in deep learning, we simply merge these two logical representations together and then interpret uh, the result as a neural network. And the semantics of that process is as follows. We calculate the least Herbrand model of the logical sample to obtain all the valid groundings of all the rules in the template. And then we map this ground logical model into a neural model, a specific mapping that I'll introduce shortly. And then once we have this neural uh, models, we can just use the gradient descent to optimize the parameters originally associated with rules in standard fashion. So here's a uh, um, description of the mapping from the logical uh, model to neural model on a simple uh, learning domain of uh, molecules. So first, the molecule data themselves can be conveniently represented uh, in relation logic as sets of facts about the molecules, particularly about the atoms A in the molecule and bonds B between them. And then we have this learning template consisting of two rules. The first one says that some attribute or um, even representation H of a chemical atom X is induced by some atom Y such that there is a B bond between them, between X and Y. And then the second rule 
builds up on this hidden representation of the chemical atoms X to induce some global representation of final query Q. And now following the aforementioned process, we ground these two rules over the input samples to obtain what can basically be perceived as a computational proof graph, the structure of which is as follows. We start with the fact nodes. Now these correspond directly to the facts given uh, in the logical samples. Now these form input into so-called rule nodes. Now these correspond directly to the groundings of the rules in the template. Then we have aggregation nodes, which aggregate the groundings with the same ground head literal uh, in the rule, in the ground rule. And then these induce so-called atom nodes, which correspond to the newly induced logical atoms from the head of the rules. And then it continues uh, recursively in the same fashion for the second rule. Now, uh, the thing to note here is again, the transfer of the parameters uh, uh, from the template into the ground model, such as in the MLNs, induces some weight sharing in here. And uh, then the only thing missing in order to learn these weights uh, via gradient descent is to make this uh, computational proof graph differentiable for which we replace basically these conjunction and disjunctions in logical programming by their uh, multi-valued counterparts and get inspired in fuzzy logic uh, for that. But this choice is kind of arbitrary. And uh, now the thing to note here is that the differently structured input samples will correspond to different uh, these Herbrand models and consequently different neural models, which is an inherent desired feature of the framework, as opposed to some other frameworks that map everything into fixed size uh, vector or tensor representation uh, to begin with. And so this is similar in spirit to what graph neural networks uh, have exploited uh, recently quite successfully. And uh, yeah, and by the way, this uh, simple template up here is already a fully functional graph neural network. Uh, so those of you familiar with graph neural nets might already recognize that the first rule is kind of this uh, propagation or message passing rule is called in graph neural nets. And the second rule is what's uh, called the readout or global pooling. But we will get to that. So now, uh, I introduced basically the same thing, but uh, from a slightly different perspective. Uh, you would take the liberty to react to this recent deep learning hype around graph neural nets and uh, introduce basically the same principles, but via direct one to one correspondence to classic um, uh, deep learning architectures and uh, corresponding uh, and the corresponding uh, logic programs. Now, this is because we've been traditionally having troubles trying to explain this stuff, especially to people without logic programming background. And, deep learning community. Uh, so that's uh, that's the reason. So we start with the simplest uh, possible model that's the standard feed forward neural nets or MLPs for short, where uh, the idea of encoding these through the logical templates uh, has been quite popular in the 90s. You might have heard about uh, models like the knowledge based artificial neural network uh, construction, where basically uh, the thing is that we assign names uh, to the neurons in the network. Uh, we took the liberty to just compress that uh, to the uh, level of uh, layers and matrix parameterization uh, associated with those. And uh, the thing with uh, MLPs is uh, that these are inherently propositional models. Corresponding templates will uh, take uh, this simple form of um, chaining uh, rules in a linear fashion, starting with the features, inducing the hidden layers all the way down to uh, the final query. So from the structural point of view, not talking about interpretability or issues like that, from purely structural point of view, there is nothing really interesting in encoding uh, feed forward neural networks via logical templates. But the thing gets more interesting when we move to the relational templates, where we have the logical variables, such as in this uh, simple case of a convolutional neural network, uh, simplified to a single dimension uh, for visual clarity. And the idea uh, is as follows. So we have these three objects, A, B, C, which are consecutive in some sense, and we want to parameterize them jointly and induce, aggregate out of them some hidden representation H. And now when we unfold such a template, such a rule over some input sequential structure, such as shown in here, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, but it's the picture on the right, it will induce the exact same computation that you would get with an application of a one-dimensional convolutional filter or an input vector of pixels, where the pixel values will correspond to the fact nodes, the individual applications of the convolutional filter correspond to the rule nodes, and then the pooling operation will correspond to the aggregation nodes. Now, this example is slightly cumbersome because there's lots of uh, inherent assumptions in pixel grids and CNNs about the structure of the input, but it gets somewhat more um, natural and inherent with various recurrent and recursive uh, templates and networks. 
with fewer assumptions on the structure of the input. And of course, recursion is very natural for uh, inherent part of logic programming. Uh, that also applies to neurologic framework. So unfolding recursive uh, templates over the input um, structures such as various sequences or trees corresponding to recurrent and recursive networks is a very natural thing to do in the framework. And so with that, we move to the graph neural nets finally, which kind of combine all these previous ideas of convolution and aggregation on completely arbitrarily structured uh, input graphs. And the idea is again, very simple uh, behind the graph neural nets is that some hidden representation of some node B is induced by this parameterized transformation of some other node U from previous layer, such that there is an edge between V and U or coming from uh, U to V. And then that can also be extended. This is kind of specific to the various uh, mutations of gene and models. So in here we had the graph search model, which extends this uh, with another uh, computation that the uh, representation of the node V can also be calculated by the representation of the same node from the previous layer. Then you, when, if you unfold uh, this computational template or input graph, uh, such as these uh, four nodes in the gray on the left, it will induce the exact same computation as you would get in the standard frameworks, PyTorch or something with this graph sash model. Now, yeah, so the thing to note here is that these rules, this is not some abstract mathematical notation as is commonly used for explaining graph neural nets in the papers. This is the actual code that you can run in the paper, uh, uh, sorry, in the framework, uh, which we find quite neat. And uh, you don't have to believe me that it induces the exact same computation. We have evaluated that experimentally as well. So this is um, in comparison of our framework against two most popular frameworks designed specifically for graph neural networks. These are Python Geometric and Deep Graph Library. And we evaluated through uh, three selected, um, perhaps one of the most popular graph neural network models, graph convolution lens, graph search, and graph isomorphism networks to validate that we obtain the same training performances as these other frameworks. And also to our own surprise, we demonstrated uh, that we can do it actually faster for these classic uh, graph neural network models as compared against these state-of-the-art graph neural network frameworks. Now, this includes the startup overhead of our framework, which is basically this computation of the Lee Zerbrand model. And it also applies to case where we apply batching and uh, GPU uh, speed up in the other frameworks. Now, this is also partly because this logic-based encoding enables us to use some uh, tricks and algorithms known from uh, statistical relational learning, such as the lifted inference, which we uh, use kind of in here, where basically shown that you can uh, detect symmetries or equivalent subcomputations in these classic graph neural network models that you can compress out to reduce uh, in a lossless fashion uh, the size and uh, running time of the models. Uh, so it doesn't have to be just about interpretability. You can really use like symbolic methods to speed up uh, standard uh, models like graph neural networks. So with that, we move to expressiveness of these uh, graph neural network models. So in there, we actually found some peculiarities that uh, has been previously kind of claimed that uh, increasing the expressiveness of the graph neural network models should lead to better learning performance, particularly has been claimed by the authors of the graph isomorphism network. So we took the liberty here again to design even more expressive uh, graph neural network models, which is very easy to do in the framework because it's not uh, limited to, to GNNs, but it's inherently based in relational logic. But actually found out that it's kind of not the case, at least uh, from our practical experience. And all these graph neural network variants, from the simplest ones to the most uh, complex ones, they, it is indeed true that they perform, uh, the more complex models perform better on the training data, but uh, it does not seem to translate into generalization performance on the test data, at, at least to our experience. And this also applies to comparison with our previous models from 2015, which was basically a variant of like differentiable graph led uh, neural networks. But on the more positive side, we did find some uh, extensions like beyond the basic Weisfall Lehman based propagation scheme of graph neural nets that uh, did help a little bit uh, when learning. And this is again, learning with the molecular data, which is standard benchmark for graph neural nets. And that is this idea of uh, breaking beyond the message, uh, passing beyond uh, between the individual nodes in the graph, but um, passing messages on the level of the atom rings within the molecules. Now, this is again, simple to do in the framework, uh, 
Declaring a ring is very straightforward in relation logic. It's just a composition of the even dual edges. And then you can use that uh, representation to aggregate the representations, uh, the distributed representations of the individual atoms in the rings to be propagated back to the individual atoms in the next layer. And this can be evaluated uh, in a very straightforward fashion in the framework. And we did find uh, this idea to help a li little bit uh, in learning with the molecules. And now, finally, and this is the most important message, obviously, the framework is by no means uh, limited or even optimized for graph neural networks. And you can use, you can probably imagine that you can use uh, the inherent relational logic based encoding to design all uh, sorts of other stuff. So nothing stops you from playing directly with hypergraphs, heterogeneous multi-relational graphs, alternative edge representations, because edges in the graph, they are just logical objects, logical atoms, just like the nodes. There is no difference between them. So you're not limited by that. You can design uh, various um, extensions of the classic GNN message passing schemes beyond the classic weissfeld Lehmann. You can directly utilize pattern matching within, uh, uh, within the networks. And this can, this is, can be differentiable. And uh, last but not least, uh, you can include some uh, logical knowledge if you have some in the templates. So with that, I will conclude. So what we did here is, and you can find these ideas in the paper. Okay, so no time to go through this uh, in here in the presentation. So what we did here is we reintroduced uh, the old LRN framework uh, from 2015 as a differentiable programming language following the declarative logic programming paradigm and integrating uh, relation logic inference kind of and uh, deep learning uh, as a proper special case uh, even uh, with these advanced neural architectures. We demonstrated as somewhat competent with respect to modern deep learning frameworks, particularly in this graph neural network uh, or perhaps only in this graph neural network uh, domain. But these are super popular state of the art models uh, uh, now in deep learning to tackle structured data. And uh, then finally, most importantly, we outline different ways of how to extrapolate, mostly in terms of expressiveness beyond the current uh, graph neural network models and how you can use the framework to do just that, with which I encourage you sincerely uh, to do, to check out the framework. It's called Neurologic, and you can find it on GitHub. Uh, there's also a um, uh, kind of more user-friendly Python front end called Pi Neurologic. And I sincerely hope that you'll find it useful in exploring your own research ideas uh, in the domain of deep relational learning, of extending or combining GNNs uh, with logic. So with that, uh, feel free to reach out to me if you need any guidance on that, or we'll be interested in some cooperation. So thank you very much for attention and that's it. And you can uh, search me out with some further questions at the poster session after this block of presentation. Thank you.